Okay, so next topic here is the uh, is a t test, right? So we we would not we will discuss it later, but uh, uh, so far we have uh, discussed all the variables of uh, uh, variables of measure, right? So um, we looked at the descriptive variables, mean, mode, median. And I feel like you now we know what those definitions are, right? So I in the exam I will test you on the definitions, right? So what is a mode, median, the variables of descriptive stats, uh, and in the question I may also ask you to explain the functions uh, of of those definitions, right? So for example, how do you calculate uh, a mean in R, right? So R functions, right? Because we work with R in this class. So if you remember like mean, bracket, bracket, right? And then what are the arguments in that brackets, right? So you need to explain that function. So this class, we will look into those functions, right? There are not many, probably like five functions for four or five variable, uh, descriptive variables. So that is something which we'll do today. Right, and the next class we will work on t test. Right, uh, so we work, we discuss t test. Then after that, we discuss how to apply t test function in R. Then we discuss ANOVA. Then after that class, we discuss how to apply ANOVA in R. Right, so that would be the the plan. So let's uh, let's open your R software. I hope you have installed it correctly, right? Good. So that's my R console. Are you there on the console? Okay. So after the class, you need to upload today's R program on GitHub. So have you set up GitHub? Okay, good. You followed me, right? You're following me on GitHub? All right, so the next thing is open a new R, R script. <clears throat> good save your r script as descriptive underscore 24 underscore 2023 Got it? So I've just labeled it as variables of descriptive sets and today's date. Save it on like your desktop or any of the folder where you can, where which you can find. Save it on my desktop. Okay, done. What should be your first line? No comments. And how do you give that? What? How do you? Uh, the hash. Yeah. Point. And what should I write in the first line? Um, also. Then. Then. Description. Purpose. Okay. So write. Fill in the. Fill in the information for you. Okay. Done.
done okay so the next thing you want to do is comment uh function for calculating mean what is the function Okay, function mean for open on bracket mean open brackets and then just the list of numbers, right? So now I don't want to give list of numbers for all the functions which I'm using in this program. So I want to create list and I want to store that in a variable right i want to create so if you remember like mean one two three four five one comma two comma three comma four five then i want to calculate mode for one two three four five right but then i don't want to give like one to five numbers every in every function so if you don't want to like repeat things in programs you create a variable right you create a variable or a bucket to store your numbers right so in r so you can create a bucket uh, in r you can create a bucket in python you can create a bucket in java right and the bucket is a data structure it's a data structure right so it's a structure which will store or hold their data temporarily or forever right so in R, to create a variable, it's a very simple statement which you have to use. So I can create a variable by just saying a, a name of a variable. Say, I will call it as a list. Okay, I'll just call it as a, any name. In this case, I'm just making a list of numbers. And that is the uh, symbol which you use to store anything which is on the right side in a list, right? So I want to create a list or a bucket for five numbers. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, probably six numbers. Uh, let's make on one more two. Because we want to calculate a mode. That's it. So I created a bucket which will store six numbers numbers are one two three four five and two c right you see the c letter right so why c c is just for say like a container just call it as a container c for container if you have more than one number then you give c c symbol and contain it in two brackets and everything which is on the right side you stay store it right you see that arrow right arrow pointing to the left side you store it in a variable called list so now every time i have to use those six numbers what should i pass name list that's it so go ahead and make a make a bucket and after every like like uh, try to save your program Right. So, do you see uh, on my desktop? Do you see two files here? This is first file which I created. Right. The script two, and this is the second file, which is an auto save. It's an auto save. So R, it tries to do an auto save after every change which you make in this program, because if you close or if your computer shuts down or any any error. Right, and if you're not saved uh, the progress, then it's gone. Right, if you don't save it, then it's gone. I don't think you can recover it. So, every time we make, make a habit of saving from file save, file save, right? Do you see an option here? File save. I see an option. You see an option there on your Windows. The save right so now you see that auto saved file has been there was an auto saved file here so that is gone now because now it's i saved it i saved the original file so just remember like okay sometimes you make things make changes 
uh, you don't track and then if you if you by mistake if you close the program or a file uh, your work may not be saved the list is there a space in between your yes there's a space yes this space right Yes, there is a space. space. You can add a space, or even if you miss it, it's fine. It will work. But make a habit of like uh, make things clean, right? So if you even if you remove the space, it will still work. Good, done. Okay. So now all the things here, right? All the things here. Are in a file in your R script, R program. We have not yet run it on your console, right? So we just have made some notes as if you do in your Word, Word document, right? We just made a uh, made a file. So to run it on your console, right? What you what I do is I just copy this. Control C, copy. Go on your console in front of your front ar front arrow, paste it, enter. Do you see any error or any output? So once I hit enter, right? Do 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 you get any output from first? It no, okay, good. So you're not supposed to get an output. So what does that mean? What does that mean now? Like you clicking and not getting an output. Yeah. Like is it supposed to give any output here? No, because you're coding in like you are putting in. Yeah, we are not so we are not printing anything. Yeah. We are just storing in a variable called list. Yeah. So now R has not given you any output, right? So that was expected because we are not printed anything. There is no, if there was any error, it would say like explicitly like, oh, this is an error in the red statement or I don't know which color it will give for you, but then it will say it's an error. So, but now it has worked. It has stored those six numbers in a variable called list. What should I do to print the list in R? Any guess? In Python, if you know, we, we make, we, if you want to print in Python language, right? You use a word print, print, and pass an argument. Here, it's easier. What do you think we should do to print the numbers in the in that variable? It's easier. What should I do to to see what is stored in the list name? Try checking what list is. Exactly. So I'll just do list list and enter. You see those numbers, right? You don't have to use any function here, like print statement, mm -hmm. like in Java or uh, Python. All right, done. So now I can pass list uh, argument in most of my descriptive uh, descriptive variable functions. And the first function is mean. So, So what should I pass? What should I do here to get mean of this list? Like in this function. Yeah. Is it just copy and paste in all? Would you mean that's mean at the list? Like mean. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. And then just copy this. Is this correct? Hmm? But you can't uh, store it, right? Like, are you saying that instead of doing this and copy this and paste here, right? Just put it here. But then we are not storing the concept. We are not storing the session. We are storing this part. So next time you open this program, you will find all of these statements. We are not storing this, so this is gone after you close your asset program. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking that we do all our, we put everything here and there, like 
But then uh, you get the output right here. So we have to copy each statement here. Yeah, so it's okay. Why copy the output, right? You don't need outputs, you need statements. So you can do that, right? If you feel that that is something which is easy for you, you can do that. Okay, so I'm just trying to check if that mean is correct. So how should I check that? What's the normal formula for calculating mean? Um, yeah. Something like this, right? This is the formula, right? Add up, divide by number. Yeah, that's correct, right? Now it's correct, right? 2.8 is the mean. So in the exam, I'll, I'll ask you to um, explain two measures for descriptive testing. So you can say mean is one measure. So you explain mean, right? So mean is the average, there's a definition in our PPT, right? Top one. And then I'll also ask you what is the function for mean? In R. And this is the function. I need to explain what is this function and what argument you need to pass. Okay, done. Then function to calculate standard deviation. Right? So what's the function? I think it's... Um, Standard deviation function is, I need to check. Okay, it's ST. All right. So function to calculate the standard deviation is SD. That's it. What should I give in the brackets? List. Okay, let's try this. Okay, 1.4. Okay. Next, function, calculate. Median. Um, Okay. And the last function which I want is mode, which is little different because I don't think you have a um So, to calculate mode, you need to 
use a user defined function. All right, so let me give you an example of, of a user defined function. All right, so this, are you good till median? Are you done till median? Okay, so you have all these outputs, same, right? Should be same for everyone. So the last function which I want to calculate is function to calculate mode. Now there is a function called uh, MODE, but it does not it does not gives you mode. It's, a, it's something different, right? So you see that mode list. So you got this output numeric, right? So instead of mode, what is mode? Most frequently re repeated value, right? So um, so what is a mode for list? Two, right? Because two is repeated. Uh, so what type of mode is it? What? Yeah. Why by mode? Unimodal. It's unimodal. One mode. Right. It's unimodal, right? So it's a unimodal mode. Number should be two. Output should be two, but uh, this mode here, right? The 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 inbuilt R, R mode function that is something different. It's something different. So we don't have a uh, a function to calculate mode, right? A uh, in inbuilt R function to calculate mode. So people give a user defined function, no? Right? So in Java, in any of the object oriented languages. Uh, there are no functions. So every function you have to, it's a user defined function. You have to write your own function in Java. Here we have used function which has been uh, written for us, right? Mean, uh, medians, SD, standard deviation. But mode is not an inbuilt function. So we have to define that. You have to write it, right? So it's called as a user defined function. It would be different for me because I can write it differently. You can write it differently. So it's a user defined function. Unfortunately, we don't have an inbuilt R function for a mode. So I just Googled, right? So I just Googled uh, mode, how to calculate mode in R. So in this uh, page here, uh, this uh, author has given four ways, four examples, four ways of calculating a mode in R. And this is, I guess, this first uh, is, the, I guess, the easiest way. And I'll just explain. You don't have to, you don't have to, uh, practice on how to like uh, write a user defined function or um, you just uh, for this at this time you just need to know that uh, things which you cannot find in R you have to write by your uh, yourself right so that's called as a user defined function and it starts with the name function so you see this function name right so it is starting with a function because it's a function. And uh, this function is taking an argument, say x. x can be list, list which we have. Then it is doing few things here. So how many? Okay. So how many statements do we have in the function function? Hmm? How many statements? Yeah, how many statements are there in the function? How many statements are there in the function? How many lines are there in the function? Okay, in the in the function four. Three. Oh, yeah. One, two, three. Function bracket bracket. In the bracket, we have three lines. So there are three statements, right? 
this is little so uh, this is not a beginner's function in the beginner's function right what we are doing every line ends with a semicolon oh. right so this is he's like an advanced r user so he's not doing semicolons here but this line here ends with a semicolon it's first statement second line ends with a semicolon second statement third line ends with a semicolon third statement so every line should end with a semicolon that helps you to uh, to distribute your statements but he has not used here but he has used three different lines right so you're getting there are three statements so first statement is using a function within a function what is the function in this first statement unique right do you remember mean mode sorry mean and sd so sd followed by two brackets mean followed by two brackets unique followed by two brackets that means function okay a function named unique so unique is a inbuilt r function so what do you think it will do right as the name says Unique yeah, pick out some right. I think you might probably pick out something that yeah, something different, like maybe occurring. I don't know because this is very similar, but unique is going to pick out something odd or something maybe right. 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 Yeah, correct. Unique will pick up unique numbers. Yeah. What is what is the what is the opposite of unique? Um, opposite of the unique English word. Um, like not unique. Not no. Any other word for not unique? String. Hmm? Um, very common. Mm, unique, not unique. Not unique uh, can be not unique. Temporary or normal or uh, duplicate. Duplicate. The opposite of unique is duplicate. Unique is one unique element, one unique number. Um, the opposite of unique would be oh, it's not unique, it's duplicate. It's duplicate. Okay. It's duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. So unique is one entity. Mm -hmm. Duplicates is one entity repeated, right? Duplicates. Mm -hmm. so that's not unique, right? So what is unique doing? Unique is just calculating the unique numbers in your list. Okay. So how many unique numbers in, are in our list? Okay. How yeah. many? So, like four. Because I think in the list that we, we had was four. Our list. Six. Unique numbers. Four. Two. Four. Yeah. Because two was repeated yeah. twice, right? Yeah. So we have six numbers. Two is repeated twice. So uniques are four, right? So what it will do is it will just calculate the uniques in the R list. So four, and if you store them in a variable called unique x, you can write any, so any, so on the left side, right? On the left side of your uh, statement, um, you can write it's just the name. So you can add, you can put any name here, right? So unique x, whatever you want. Left side, left side of your statement is just some variable name storing the things on the right side, right? So now it does some unique thing. Then it does again. It applies a function called tablet. Then within the tablet, it is again applying a function called match. And then this, yeah, you don't need to. Uh, it take it takes in two arguments, right? So again, within function, it is calling two functions, tablet and match. Then uh, the output of this is stored in a variable called tablet underscore x. Then finally, you take your unique x, and from that unique x, you do few things, right? Within that statement, yeah. so it's a user defined function, and what this function does is it calculates the mode. Uh, from our list, we're expecting more to be number. What is the mode from our list? Two, right? So if you apply a function called my mode on our list, we're expecting a value two. Right? So this is an example of a user-defined function. So very advanced. 
thing, right? You don't need to like, so why you need them? It's a logic, right? But there has to be like a reason why you have to use this first calculated unit. And every step is followed by every other step, right? So you cannot do tablet before unit, right? So first comes unique. So you calculate all the unique elements, then it does something with tablet function, then it does, then it does the matching. Right? So this equal equal is like something with matching. And finally, once you apply this complete function, we get number two. So do you understand this user defined function? I don't want, I'm not going to ask you to write a user defined function any any time in this class. I, I just want to understand it because I'm interested. So um so personally, what you're trying to do is like code like putting the function like calculate mode mm -hmm. in the arrow. Like so when you pick out the unique and you like tabulate, then you match x. Is it just for the general like x is like the least yeah. then unique is like the yes unique so oh, statement. Tabulate. Uh, I need to check. The so tabulate in R. The tabulate function is used to count the frequency of occurrence of an element in a vector. Okay. Right. So it 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 will calculate uh, how many times some number has been repeated. And so that is what tablet does. Unique is for just uh, calculating unique values. Right, so the logic here is, so unique, so one, two, three, we have four unique elements. Tablet will find which number has been repeated frequency of each number. Finally, it will just match, right? If you tabulate x uh, with unique x, from unique x, how many times every number has been repeated? That's the logic. And then it will give that number. So what we will do is, uh, in this class, I'm not going to ask you to create a user by function. What is your example? So what we should do here is um uh, okay, unless it's not part of this bracket, like I don't know, is that the bracket open after the function of time? Is it connected to the which bracket? Because I know this one the, the hashtag is just a bracket. Yeah, but I'm asking what the question. Yeah, I'm asking if the part that bracket is part of the like all of these things are included in the bracket, like the three sentences. Uh-huh. Yes. The first, they are all so anytime you're writing a function in R, it should, it should start with a name. Mm -hmm. This this function can be any other name, right? So you can write any name. It does not need to be like a function name itself. You can you can call it anything. But anything is followed by these two brackets in the function. Mm -hmm. Right, so this name is followed by these two brackets. Mm -hmm. But we are doing we are using we are doing a user defined function. This function name is not is not present in your R, it's not an inbuilt R function. It's not like mean bracket bracket. It's a user defined function. So R does not know what is this. So what is this? Followed by these two curly brackets. This function name is this information. Okay. Right? So this something is new. And definitely, it's, it's a function because it is followed by two brackets, two spots, two brackets here. But R does not know what the function is. So you need to let R know that this function does things in this two coding brackets. These are the things this, this function does. Um, Make sense? Okay. The logic. So can you, um, can you go on to, in your browser, can you open this page? Uh, it's called Statistic Globe. Try opening this page because I want you to copy this uh, function and paste it in your R program.
Can we find this page? Just Google. Find it? It's called Statistics Globe. Yeah, that's the one. No? Go back. Uh, type in Statistics Globe some more function. More function. Okay. Yeah. Now you need to copy. Good. Found it. Yeah. Now you select select this state these statements here. Select it. Copy. Control C. Go to your R. And uh, in your R script, R program, uh, paste it beneath that comment. Good. So uh, we want to use this function. And uh, I just copied this user defined function and pasted it in the R script. Okay, done. Next thing is go onto your console and do the same paste. Okay, go on your console, do the same paste, hit enter. Any error? It looks a little messy, but that's fine. I'm not getting any error, right? So now what you have done is, uh, we have ran this user defined function. The name of this function is? The my, name of this function is? My function. Wait, the name of the function. Yes. Correct. Yes. 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 My, my mode, right? So my underscore mode is the name of the function. And R has, uh, has taken this function, my mode. And uh, now I think it's ready. Because it has not given me any output, which is what expected. It has not given me any error. So my mode function is ready to uh, ready to use. So what should I do to calculate mode now? With the function called my underscore mode. What should I do for calculating mode of our list? Um, it's like the function is like, like can you do like um, my mode then? Function. My yeah. yeah, let's do that. So now I just need to do my underscore mode. The name of our list is list. And then I'll just run this. Let's see if we get number two. Got it. Got it. Okay. So that's our user defined function. So uh, first three functions are R functions, right? In the R functions, and this last function is the mode, which is the user defined function. For applying this function, we use the same technique name of the function followed by the list, and you would get the mode of your, of your list. That's it. Any questions so far? Um. 
Okay, I just wanted to ask, like, if we were good, like, now we're dealing with lists that are not so long, even if we have, like, a larger list term, this will still apply, like, this method. Yes. And this list can be n number of elements. Let me give you. Uh, I'll, yeah, let's 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 make a list, a new list called list two, and I'll add in, say, numbers from one to um, hundred thousand. This is a long list, one to hundred thousand. Made a list two. What should I do to check list two? You see 100,000 numbers here, right? So what I want to do is I want to calculate more of this. Uh, so these are 100,000 unique elements. What should be the mode of this list? Let's try. Right. So it does not have a mode. So output you get all the unique elements only. So there are there is no mode here, right? So that so you don't have any output here. You just get the list back. That's it. So it works with n number of elements. All right. So definitely practice on first three functions. Uh, user defined function is not so important at this point, but definitely in future, um, you need to understand before, before writing any of the, any of your own function, you need to come up with like a logic, right? The steps. Now, just to give you an example that this author, right? This author previously, he gave four ways, four different ways of writing function for calculating more. Now, uh, we can just come up with one way, right? Why four way? Why different ways? It's because uh, there's something called as a, uh, uh, a complexity, right? An algorithmic complexity, which means how much time does uh, does it take to calculate your output, right? So each of these steps. Um, will give you an output, but then how much time will it take for the computer to calculate unique elements? Say you have 100,000 elements or million of elements. Will this be the most efficient way of calculating unique values or a final output, right? So it's called as a uh, complexity of an algorithm, right? So this, we have written an algorithm, right? This is we have, these are the three steps of your algorithm, right? It's an algorithm. So how complex is your algorithm? Is it the most efficient? Because obviously you're using your computer to calculate the these steps, right? So um, if you have like many numbers, um, you have to uh, you have to get your output in minimal number of time, right? The most efficient and using least resources, right? So you are just using your local computer, but then there are some like uh, tables or some complex data structures. Uh, which you are working with, then you may have like a backend, right? And so, um, like uh, a MySQL or a database on a backend. So you need to uh, consider that and then come up with the most efficient uh, solution, which would give you give the best complexity of your of your algorithm. So, uh, so that's a little advanced. At this point, we're just doing basic, basic, right? But this is how you write a user defined function. All right. So the last thing which you want to do today is save. Save your R program and push it on your GitHub. And then we are done. Do you know how to do that? That's the scripts, right? The descriptive 24, 23. Yeah. Push on your GitHub. 